Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, please silence all electrical devices as our ceremony will begin momentarily. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors and honored guests. On behalf of Colonel Christopher J. Leonard, commander of the 48th Mission Support Group, welcome to Royal Air Force Lake and Heath and the 48th Contracting Squadron Change of Command. I'm Master Sergeant Jeffrey Lewis, your narrator for today's ceremony. We are honored to have many distinguished guests with us, both in person and virtually. Please hold your applause until all are announced. Aaron Leonard, spouse of Colonel Leonard. Misa Coyne, spouse of Lieutenant Colonel Adam V. Coyne and their children, Emily and Kyler. Sarah Simmons, spouse of Lieutenant Colonel James S. Simmons and their children, Scotty, Tyler, and Summer. Colonel Jason A. Camilletti, commander of the 48th Fighter Wing. Colonel John C. Stratton, Vice Commander of the 48th Fighter Wing. Chief Master Sergeant Mark Sholkoff, Command Chief of the 48th Fighter Wing. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to all Commanders, Chiefs, First Sergeants, and the men and women of the Liberty Wing who have taken the time to join us for this special occasion. The change of command ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history and dates back to the time of Friedrich the Great of Prussia. In that period, military organizations developed unique flags with specialized colors and designs. When soldiers followed their leaders into battle, they kept sight of their particular unit flag as an indicator of success. Because of its importance, it was incorporated into ancient change of command ceremonies. Although the modern ceremony is principally symbolic, it indicates to all present the authority of the commander who holds the colors. As the unit bander or guide on is exchanged, it represents the responsibilities associated with commanding the unit being relinquished and accepted. Today, Lieutenant Colonel Adam V. Coyne will relinquish command of the 48th Contracting Squadron and Lieutenant Colonel James S. Simmons will assume command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the, of the British and American national anthems and the invocation.
First, let me say, Lieutenant Colonel Coyne, uh, it's been a pleasure to serve you in your airmen. As we enter into a time of prayer, please join me according to your personal beliefs. Heavenly Father, thank you for making a way through Jesus for me to talk to you in prayer. May this whole ceremony bring you honor. All good things come from you, so I thank you for the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Coyne and for his service to the 48th Contracting Squadron and to this wing. You have led him through this assignment, and I pray that he will continue to follow your wisdom and example. I ask for your blessing upon him, his wife Misa, and kids Emily and Kyler. Guard and guide them as they transition into a new stage of life, and as they continue to share their husband and their dad with the Air Force. May they continue to grow in your grace as you write their next chapter. And as the guide on passes between commanders, Strengthen them both for the mission that you have called them to. Thank you for our new commander, Lieutenant Colonel Simmons. Each day and every experience of his career has been preparation for this moment, to take command and to lead the men and women of the 48th Contracting Squadron. Give him the wisdom to know the right path and the courage to follow that path, no matter how hard it may be. Give him strong shoulders, thick skin, humility, patience, a sharp mind, and the highest moral resolve to always do the right thing. I ask you to bless him and his wife, Sarah, and kids, Scotty, Tyler, and Summer, as he assumes command. Father, I pray for that day when there will be no more war, and there is no need of what we do. But until that day comes, help us all to be ready to do what you have called us to do. Keep all of our war fighters safe wherever they are. Protect them as they protect us. In your holy name I pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Bailey, for that wonderful invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the presiding officer for today's ceremony, commander of the 48th Mission Support Group, Colonel Christopher J. Leonard. All right, good morning, everyone. What a fantastic day as we pass the guide on, and more importantly, we pass the special trust and the special responsibility that goes with it from one amazing commander to the soon-to-be amazing commander of the 48th Contracting Squadron. I kind of have a, a standard way I go through these, these, these speeches after I welcome everyone. First, I forgot to welcome a, you know, Colonel Camaletti and distinguished visitors. You're, you're welcome being here virtually. Welcome to everybody here who's virtually. And I would just like to say, it is an honor to be here with all of you. As we, uh, we go through this today, I always thank the family at the end, but I decided to flip it around today because I'm about to say a bunch of good things about Colonel Coyne up here, and it pains me a little bit in certain ways because I like to give him grief. But I want Misa, you to know that everything, I know that everything he has done over these last three years, the only squadron commander to serve three years, has happened because of the support you and the family have given him. So everything I say about him, I say about all three of you. So thank you for what you have done. And personally, thank you for uh, what you have done for the squadron, everything from the little gifts for the new arrivals to the babies. It is not lost on me, the effort you've put in. I know it's extremely hard. It seems counterintuitive that leading a small squadron might be harder than a large squadron. But I know the bench is shallower sometimes, and it's harder because you have less people to be there. You filled so many roles, and thank you. Emily Tyler, thank you. I look at you, and I'm reminded that everybody's a role model, regardless of your station in life. Everyone's a role model in one way or the other. Thank you for being the kind of role models that my kids and other kids in the neighborhoods can look up to of what the horrible teenager should really be like. Thank you. All right. So uh, in lieu of a lot of scripted remarks, I've told my commanders over the, the, the last three years that, you know, when you get up and speak, you're really, really lucky if everybody remembers one thing when you get done speaking. So. To help you try to remember my one point today, I made some really high-priced visual aids to help out. This right here is Sugar Ray Robinson, a boxer from the 1940s, generally regarded as one of the greatest boxers of all times. He was such a great boxer, the sports writers of the time had to come up with a new way to describe him. They came up with the phrase, the greatest pound for pound fighter ever. And if you look up on the internet now, just about any list you find of boxers, we'll still highlight the greatest pound for pound boxers ever. 
Sugar Ray Robinson. This is the 48th Contracting Squadron, led by Lieutenant Colonel Adam Coyne. Pound for pound, person for person, the greater, greatest enablers of combat air power in the United Kingdom, I would argue you safety, and I will definitely say that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Four bases, or four wings, 13 bases, have relied on you and this squadron for the last three years to make it happen. I thought about running through every squadron in this wing and saying how you supported them, and then I thought about this right here, and you would never speak to me again if I took that long. So let me just do it this way. I'll go by groups. The medical group. When you go in and you see a provider there, consider the fact that they may actually be a contract provider. Over 30 of them brought there by the contracting squadron. I think back to the first big challenge we faced three years ago together when our operating room went down. Due to the, filter, due to the air handling system and the filtration, it was unable to maintain the sterile conditions required to do surgeries or deliver babies. At that time, it was entirely maintained by another agency, the 48th Contracting Squadron had literally nothing to do with that problem. I had no solution. The wing had no solution. We sat together, several leaders, Colonel Coyne being one of them, and eventually we left the room and I said, AC, can you fix it? Can you do it? And he said, yes, we can. And sure enough, before that problem was fixed before I would have even had a plan to how to fix the problem if I hadn't gone to the 48th Contracting Squadron. Surgeries were done, babies were delivered because of the 48th Contracting Squadron. Someone else was born out of that too. Probably the greatest, greatest idea I think that we came up with here, and that is, hey, we need a new way to deliver engineering services. And I think of this as how we, uh, the greatest thing you did for the Mission Support Group Squadron. Three years ago, we were completely reliant on another organization to deliver our services of which we had zero control and zero responsibility over. When they failed to deliver, all we had was hope. We had no options. We had no course of action. The engineers were frustrated, and they needed answers. Colonel Coyne and his team, they were the ones that came up with it. Again, they could have simply said, it's not our problem, and it's not our issue. But I saw AC spend countless hours, many, many late nights, not just working contracting actions, but developing solutions to get after it. The way this base operates and maintains its infrastructure today is entirely different because of what Colonel Coyne did. I told three successive wing commanders here that the greatest risk to this mission I see is our inability to maintain infrastructure. I no longer say it the same way because of Adam Coyne. I also think when I think of the contracting, I think of AC, I think of a young defender standing at the gate at Feltwell. Interesting enough, I went out one night, it was his first shift on duty ever. His job was to sit in the truck, and if somebody called, there's a gate run over the radio, his job was to drive that truck in that road and hope that stopped the guy, a bad guy driving through in another large vehicle. Contracting squadron solved that problem. They aggressively went out and they got anti-vehicle barriers, not just from here, but from Mildenhall. Today, that airman is no longer on that post. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there is an airman who does not have to be on duty because of the contracting squadron did. And more importantly, if somebody does ever try to get on our base now, they will meet steel instead of flesh because of what you did. When I say you sported combat air power, I mean it in the most literal sense too. So I thought of the OG for a while. I thought of some very basic things like night vision goggles. Not maybe the hardest contract, but absolutely a force multiplier. I think of what General Harrigian is thinking about right now. He is thinking about a new range contract. Right now, in order to, to, for an air, one of our aircraft to use an AIM-120, AIM a missile, they have to go to Nellis Air Force Base. There is nowhere in this hemisphere where they can practice using a live weapon. AC and his team got after it, and they're in the process of putting a contract in place where not only will, it, will we're fighters from this wing, but fighters across the entire command practice the mission and be ready for combat. It's not just limited to this wing. There's U-2s at Fairford, Air, the Fairford right now. You know why they're there? Because of this squadron right here, and again, AC, Reconnaissance Aircraft and Theater. 
And it's also the future. It's not just combat air power today, it's the future of combat air power. When we think about the F-35, I say today we are executing a plan to make it happen. It's a challenging plan and executing it is hard. But you know what is harder than executing a plan? Coming up with a plan. You know what's harder than coming up with a plan? Figuring out how you're gonna get enough people and enough resource to actually figure out how you're gonna figure out how to figure out to get to the plan. That's what AC did. We talk today, I listen to general officers talk and they talk about the 48th Fighter Wing PIO and all the things that it's doing. And I think back to three years ago when the 48th Fighter Wing PIO was one person, one pilot trying to figure out how to bring the F-35 here. Today it's a robust and functioning organization because of the contracts you put in place, the expertise you brought here that allowed us not just to plank a plan, but to figure out how to make that plan. Your contributions there are off the charts. But AC is not perfect. Sugar Ray Robinson lost a fight or two. So I had to think about AC's failures for a while because he needs to hear a few. I reached I reach this conclusion. AC and the contracting squadron is really selfish. You know why I come to that conclusion? I thought of all those times we sat in the fitness center at quarterly award ceremonies. And over and over again, you guys walked up to take all the awards and five other squadrons stared at you in anger as the path got burned. I would say it was unprecedented and I've never seen anything like it, but that's not true because I saw the pretty much the exact same thing at the Wink Award early board ceremony. And then I thought briefly about the uh, MAGCOM ceremony two years ago where we had a handful of winners. And you know what I took out of that? I took that there was more representation at that ceremony from the 48th Contracting Squadron than there were from entire wings in this command. AC, I couldn't be more proud of what you've done. It's truly been an honor. I wish you absolutely the best at SAF AQC. And this wing and I will always be indebted, indebted to your service. Thank you. The beautiful thing about a three-year command, from my perspective, is it gave us three years to figure out who the next commander should be and to get that one right. The staff kind of hate me when they talk about who you need the next commander, because I always give them pretty much the same answer. I need the absolute best person you have. And I tell them they've got a command before, they had to absolutely excel in it, and they got to have a pile of experience. And who do you have? And there's a long pause, and they go back and they fish for a long time. And then they come up with names like Lieutenant Colonel Simmons, who sits here, to be, he sits here today, and I know who will continue to lead this contracting squadron to the right level. He arrived here from uh, Los Angeles, from a, the sunny Los Angeles, to a reasonably sunny day here in England, where, uh, make sure I get this right, he worked for Millsatcom and the SMC, doing some of the big A acquisitions kind of stuff. But prior to that, he already showed that he can lead, lead in command, as he was the commander of the uh, contracting squadron at F.E. Warren Air Force Base. And based off his records, he absolutely crushed it. Uh, other than that, he's got a broad range, you know, based from large acquisitions, weapon systems, uh, in, addition, in addition to his command. I look forward to what you're gonna do over this next, these next couple of years. To your family, welcome. It's absolutely a pleasure for, you, pleasure for me to see you. I wish I had three years to share with you. I will tell you, your children are being fantastic. And I say we ask a lot of our Air Force families but when we ask our Air Force families to fly across the ocean and then five people with three young kids to go into quarantine for 14 days, I'm not sure there's a greater sacrifice than that. So thank you for that, and you're going to have a fantastic command. With that, you are ready. We will now hear the numbers of contracting actions and all the things we normally talk about will be presented in a declaration to Lieutenant Colonel Coyne. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Leonard. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the medal presentation. Due to COVID restrictions, we will not be pinning on the medal today. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Executive Order 16 January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, 3rd Oak Leaf Cluster, to Lieutenant Colonel Adam V. Coyne, for meritorious service to July 2017 to 17 July 2020. Lieutenant Colonel Adam V. Coyne distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 48th Contracting Squadron, 48th Mission Support Group, 48th Fighter Wing, Royal Air Force Lake and Heath, England. 
During this period, Colonel Coyne led United Kingdom-wide acquisition strategy to rebalance engineering service delivery across four wings and 13 bases, ultimately divesting 12 contracts valued at $93 million while mitigating the wing's number one mission readiness risk. Under his leadership, contracting professionals executed $249 million in 1,800 actions in support of three flying mission wings during an unprecedented operational surge driven by multiple post-nation contract failures, F-35 bed down, a new surety mission, and a global pandemic. Furthermore, his unit transformed the wing's readiness posture, executing $74 million of first-ever contracts to include a redundant commercial air radar feed, a $27 million theater-wide training range contract, and the Air Force's first ICD-705 oversight contract for a secure facility construction overseas. Finally, Colonel Coyne instituted multiple organizational and personnel changes, tripling contract growth while leading the command in cost savings and acquisition health metrics. As a result, unit members garnered five Air Force and 23 major command awards, while the unit earned United States Air Force Europe's best large contact contracting squadron in 2017 and 2019. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Coyne reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as Lieutenant Colonel Coyne addresses his command for the last time. Master Sergeant Lewis, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors, fellow commanders, chiefs, family, friends, um, everybody joining us here today and virtually from afar, I appreciate you being here today for this change of command ceremony. Uh, sir, I listened to the unit accomplishments and as always your, your thoughtful words um, and I feel truly humbled in this moment and the opportunity to live in the United Kingdom, to work with our mission partners in the Royal Air Force and to helm this amazing squadron for three years. It's, it's truly been a blessing uh, and I've been honored to be here. Today's ceremony uh, is the culmination of months of planning and coordination that largely happens behind the scenes late at night when the workload is finished. Lieutenant Irving, Ms. Yolanda, Protocol, the entire team, thank you so much for putting this together. It means a lot to me, it means a lot to my family, it means a lot to the squadron and it means a lot to the group. Chaplain Bailey, uh, as always, and I say this to him a lot, um, I want to thank you for your thoughtful invocation and your support that you provided to our squadron. Where are you, Chaplain? There you are. Okay. Uh, the, the support that you provided to our squadron and to our airmen and over the years. Um, I learn something from you every time that we talk, and I appreciate that you are always quick to check in on commanders and make sure that we're doing okay and that we're finding that right work-life balance. To that end, I failed miserably but I always appreciate your advice and will remember it kind of going forward. So thank you, Chaplain Bailey. Uh, to wing leadership uh, here, Liberty Wing leadership, Bloody 100th, uh, 352nd Sal, 501st Combat Support Wing leadership, um, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I appreciate your support, your leadership, your mentorship, and always your inclusion in the important conversations. Uh, we, are, we are one of the smallest squadrons in the wing. I always felt that you understood our contributions to the fight and went out of your way to listen and engage us early on during the requirement and problem solving process. It's not always that way. Whether it was F-35, construction security, NATS, BASH, KC-135, shelters, uh, SAL mission planners, taxi or no cost medical contracts with the NHS, um, you were quick to involve us early in the process and then generous with recognition when we found a way to finally get it done at the end of the day. And again, I appreciate that. Uh, to that end, I want to thank Colonel Camaletti, Colonel Stratton, Colonel Leonard for their unwavering support. I'll never forget the time Colonel Camaletti uh, pumped the brakes during a wing staff meeting to foot stomp the support that cons and finance brings to the fight. In the Air Force's premier fighter wing, that's high praise that still resonates with me today. In fairness, 
Uh, it doesn't quite resonate with me as much as him coining the term gym sortie after our reopening of the COVID gym, but it's pretty darn close. Colonel Leonard, um, I would be remiss not to thank you and Aaron kind of publicly here today for all you've done for me, um, for MISA, for the contracting squadron, and for our MSG airmen. Um, your thoughtful leadership approach gave me the flexibility and room to maneuver necessary to partner and collaborate and execute during an incredibly challenging tour that you kind of highlighted. Uh, I'm a better airman, having worked under your command, and I'm grateful to you and Aaron for our friendship and support. I look forward to crossing paths in the Pentagon and watching Henry race down the road in his scooter, at least partially clothed. Yep, right. And now to the men and women of the 48th Contracting Squadron. Um, for the last three years, you've absolutely amazed me with your professionalism, your dedication, and your mission focus resolved. I could ramble on about F-35 and ATFP and operational group requirements, engineering service delivery that we've talked to already, but what sticks with me is just how much mission you've impacted across the entire island in such a short period. With more than 1,500 contractors under your direct control, you've postured the bases for the first uh, fifth generation, uh, fifth generation uh, bed down, aircraft bed down, uh, you've mitigated the wing's number one re readiness LIMFAC, and you've tripled our contract portfolio. I could go person by person around the room and through our squadron and thank everybody uh, how much that they appreciate you um, because you embraced the change and you really got after the mission at the end of the day, and I couldn't ask more from you, so um, it wasn't always easy, uh, and I appreciate you, um, you stepping up and, and kind of um, making it happen, because all of these accomplishments at the end of the day um, are on you. You did the hard work, you did the heavy lifting, and, and I appreciate that that wasn't easy. Last but not least, I want to thank my wife, Misa, daughter, Emily, son, Kyler, um, for their patience, love, and support. Uh, this marks our 11th PCS in 23 years, and each time it amazes me how patient, positive, graceful, resilient you are uh, in this process. You are my motivation, and I'm truly fortunate to have you in my life. I know it's not enough, but please accept the gifts, kind of Oprah style, underneath your chairs there. Um, Emily, Misa, I got you some roses. Kyler, I know that you'd shoot me in the face if I got you some roses, so I got you what you really wanted, a PlayStation card. So yeah, congratulations, and thanks for, thanks for sticking with the, the long haul. It means the world to me. Um, finally, James, congratulations on your selection for command. Um, you're the right leader for the challenges that lay ahead, and I know that the squadron is in great hands. Sarah, Sarah, Tyler, Scotty, Summer, uh, congratulations. Welcome to the United Kingdom. I hope you get an opportunity to fully explore it and travel a little bit. Um, you're going to be, you're going to have an amazing time when you're here. This is an amazing opportunity for you, and it's great to bring you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Coyne. At this time, the Superintendent, Senior Master Sergeant Joshua A. Kenna, would like to represent the men and women of the 48th Contracting Squadron and honor you with the final salute. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the changing of command. All is your orders. Attention to orders. Special Order G-20-09, under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51-509, in Air Force Instruction 38-101, Lieutenant Colonel James S. Simmons is appointed Commander, 48th Contracting Squadron, effective 17 July 2020. Signed Christopher J. Leonard, Commander, 48th Mission Support Group.
Sir, I assume command. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time the commander of the 48th Contracting Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel James S. Simmons. Thank you. Good morning. Commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, distinguished guests, teammates, thank you all for, for spending your valuable time with us today. Uh, whether you're here in person, of course, or, or with us virtually, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to start by thanking our wing leadership, Colonel Camaletti, sir. Uh, thank you for allowing me the awesome opportunity and the awesome responsibility to lead this great team forward in support of the 48th Fighter Wing. My family and I are thrilled and proud to be part of the Liberty Wing. Colonel Leonard, sir, thank you so much for your trust and advocacy as well as for taking the time, of course, to, to be here uh, to provide, uh, to preside over this occasion for us today. Uh, Mrs. Leonard, ma'am, thank you also for being here today. Uh, to the leadership at our many local and UK-wide partner organizations, thank you. I look forward to the opportunity to meet you, either in person or virtually, and to continuing to build on the great uh, synergies and successes 48 Cons has experienced working with you uh, in the past few years in furtherance of your missions as well. Uh, shout out to my fellow commanders who may be dialed in. Thanks for taking the time today. I, uh, I look forward to getting to know each of you and I, I really value the opportunity that I'm being given to showcase what contracting brings to the fight uh, and our ability to help you and your missions and your units succeed. Uh, to the team that's, that's made all this happen here today, Lieutenant Irving, Lieutenant Rennick, uh, Sergeant Kenna, Chaplain Bailey, uh, Edmund Miranda, Sergeant Lewis, all of you and probably a lot of other folks, protocol folks that I'm forgetting. Uh, thank you all. Uh, you've, uh, you've made this all very, very special for my family and I. Um, Lieutenant Corden family, Adam, Misa, Emily, Kyler, uh, thank you all. You guys have gone way above and beyond uh, in this entire process. You guys have helped make this beyond successful uh, as, as transitions go. Um, lots of variables over the last few months, to, to put it mildly. Uh, so thank you guys for, for your willingness to, to be so, so flexible with your own plans as you transition uh, in order to, to accommodate uh, all the changes and challenges of the last few months. Adam, by all, by all accounts, uh, you knocked the job out of the park. And, uh, and you knocked the transition out of the park. So congratulations to you on a, on a job very well done and uh, best wishes to you guys in DC. Um, to my lovely wife and kids, uh, I won't say too much because my lips gonna start shaking and everybody's gonna laugh at me and, and uh, we'll have to take five and, and reconvene. Um, but uh, thank you for, for continuing the, the Air Force journey with me. Um, we got here as a team, and together we're going to make this, this time here um, experiences that we'll never forget. I'm confident of that. It's, uh, it's also going to be a real, a real challenge for each of us in, in, in different ways. Uh, I'm confident of that as well. Um, but we're an Air Force family, and, and, and this is what we do. And this is, all, this is all normal for us. So thank you, guys. Uh, we're here. We're in the UK. We've been talking about it for so long. We're not in quarantine, so that's good. We're, we're, we're stepping in the right direction. Um, so thank you guys. Um, lastly, to the men and women of 48 Cons, uh, your reputation as a, as a crew of absolute rock stars precedes you. Uh, it's a real honor to stand in front of you and be called the, contracting, the 48th Contracting Squadron Commander. Um, please know that I don't take any of this for granted. I appreciate the contributions and sacrifices you've made in support of the mission in the past and those that you'll make in the future. Uh, together, we're gonna keep getting after it. It's, it's really just that simple. So uh, I look forward to that and thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time 
48th Contracting Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Commander Lieutenant Colonel James S. Simmons. Thank you, Colonel Simmons. Senior Master Sergeant Kenna would like to represent the men and women of the 48th Contracting Squadron by offering you your first salute. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Please stand for the departure of the official party and the playing of the Air Force song. I would like to ask that you refrain from the honored tradition of singing the Air Force song due to COVID restrictions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you very much for joining us.